Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Good morning, Spokane. Good morning, Maranita. Good morning, Hutchinson. And good morning to you. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Please say hello to my sidekick sister from another mister and the Minnesota Twins Employee of the Month, Kendall Mark. It's me. How you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, we had a good weekend, you and I. Uh, we hung out socially, which we are actual <laughs> friends, I know. Thank you for chuckling at that. We, yes. we, are, we are actually friends. It was funny, we, we got off the elevator um, at the tar at Target Field for the home opener, and the elevator opens, and I just hear my mom goes, oh my God, and here's Jason and Colin. Yep. It was like the gates of Nirvana had opened Aww. up, and you were there to welcome us. It was I felt really the, fun. I felt the same way about you. It was great to see you. It was a, I, we, I met several uh, viewers mm -hmm. at the Twins game, and and then we uh, we kind of uh, stole some seats from a, a friend of ours <laughs> who wasn't using them right on the third base line, you know, the fancy seats. So we sat there for a few minutes, and um, and lo and behold, I went to check Twitter, and as I'm checking Twitter, we ended up on TV. The uh, jumbotron. We or TV, ended up TV. Uh, TV TV the coverage. <laughs> And so you saw, uh, I, I think, the third baseman, and then behind, perfectly placed behind the third. So if, if I'm centered, over here was me stuffing my face, like I'm drinking, of course, <laughs> and then Colin's on the other side drinking as well. I'm like, they caught the one moment where we're swinging down our Extra ballpark large cocktail. vodka soda. Yeah, <laughs> but it was great. It's so good to have baseball back a little chilly but it was wasn't it good just to be there it was so nice oh i was sitting in the sun so it was actually great i felt wonderful yeah mm -hmm. it was if you're in the sun it was fine and mm -hmm. saturday then we saw each other saturday mm -hmm. we went back to the game on saturday so we have an addiction to twins baseball that's right and that's and i'm sure they're okay with it hey uh before we get started with some fun i wanted to update you all you've been very sweet asking about our dog uh my boy dexter uh my boxer um, if you watched Friday, you know that he uh, went in for surgery uh, at the University of Minnesota. Oh, there's my boobs. Handsome boy. Yes, he is. Um, he went into the U of M to remove, uh, to have some cancerous uh, tumors removed. And uh, I just want to say that he is doing well. Um, he's all stitched up. He looks a little bit like Frankendex, <laughs> um, only on one side, because, you know, he had the big tumor on his shoulder. And then listen to this. This is, I just want to applaud vet techs and vet students because we got a call uh, right after the show and I got worried because, you know, no, no news is good news. And I got a call and it was Colin telling me that in the pre op examination, the vet students found two more little lumps on them. Hmm. And not throwing shade, my vets are, the, uh, Eric and all vets are great, but. No, but we didn't catch it. And I pet him constantly because, you know, boxers are prone to tumors. So I'm constantly Good rubbing feeling. him. Mm -hmm. and, it, and two vet students found two more tumors. So they called to ask my permission to have those removed. I said, absolutely. Wow. So poor baby. He has one, one little stitch. He has stitches on his butt. He has it on his shoulder and on his leg. And then I, I, if you follow me on Instagram, maybe I'll repost it. And then we'll get started. Dex is fine. You know what broke my heart? I, you saw the picture. Mm -hmm. I got home after the show on Friday, and Mr. Big, our French Bulldog, does not know life without Dexter, without his big brother. I got home, and Biggie would not leave the front door, and it killed me. Like, I start, I, I'm moments from crying right now. It broke my... Dexter was fine. Right. That killed me, and I tried to... I, I went in the other room. I go, Biggie, come here. Come here, Biggie. Wouldn't nope. leave that door. Nope. Stood, just sat there by the door and waited until the front door would open and hopefully his brother was there. So and he yeah. did come home. He did come home. So thank you everybody for your kind words. It really means a lot because you know that's my boy right there. Yep. That's my bubs. Let's get started, everybody. Roll it, Leo. It's time for the hot dish. I know, I forgot my spoon again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dancing with the Stars is on the move over the weekend. This was crazy. 
This was Nutter Butters. Disney announced the show is going to move off broadcast TV. Instead, Dancing with the Semi Stars is going to air exclusively on Disney Plus. It will be Disney Plus's first attempt at live TV. The move comes as Monday Night Football returns to ABC, where it was made famous in the 70s and 80s for a handful of games in the fall. Dancing with the Stars, if you haven't been keeping track, has been on ABC since 2005. Wow. Wow. It's a long time. It's a long time. This is so fascinating to me because how is this? I know how it's going to work. You just go on Disney Plus and you hit the live tab or whatever they're going to do. But ABC, oh, I don't know if this is a great move. It's still, even, even though it's floundering, mm -hmm. it's still one of their highest rated shows. It seems interesting in that this is the one thing that they're going to take off. They have so many other options that they could move around. Why dancing with the stars? I don't know if they if it's the demographics. I, I don't I don't understand it either. Well, here's the deal. I don't really care anymore because like a lot of you, I and I don't mean any shade. I can't watch Tyra host that show. Mm -hmm. I stopped. It's very different than it it's used to be. very different. Not throwing shade. I just don't like her in that role. Um, and I stopped. That's when I stopped. And I used to like Dancing with the Stars. I, I've, I've stopped watching since Tyra came on. Mm -hmm. It's just because it's all about, comes right back to Tyra. Right, right. Her 40 outfits. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, you know, oh, look, another outfit change. Let's keep it on the contestants. Well, I did, I did read somewhere, I don't know if it was Dateline, but one of the articles I read was that one of the executives that was involved in the big Tyra changeover also is leaving with this transition. So I'm not hmm. sure if the other executives were like, yeah, bad idea taking Tom away. Yeah. Now we're going to try something new. What? What are you telling me? <laughs> that a television executive made a bad call? <gasps> what? I have never heard of such a thing. I could be sick. TV executives know everything, Kendall. They're never wrong. Except executive producer Jeff. Magic. Look at that, oh, Kendall! Whoa! Ladies and gentlemen, I set that up properly. You are looking at the debut. I need like a uh, Jeff cam it is, lower third. Jeff, we, can, we barely could afford what you're on oh, okay. right now. We can't All afford right. graphics. We can't, I mean, you know. you're, you're looking at the brand new Jeff cam. Kendall, look at that. That's beautiful. Can I have my own applause? What? Yeah, you have your own applause and everything. It's similar to, you know, Wendy Williams, executive producer, is, on, is in a little booth. Yes. And the fun fact, Jeff isn't even in that booth. He's not even in the studio. He is uh, somewhere else. Uh, he's in Iowa uh, producing the show. Yeah, I heard we actually took the booth. We borrowed it from we a did. church locally. So we're just going to give it back. Don't Jeff worry. Is, we, we did borrow that, that booth. Yeah, we did borrow that little <laughs> sandy over there. Yeah. <laughs> Next in the dish. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Leo. This is going to be fun. Next in the dish. The girl chat is coming to an end. Hmm. Uh, the reel is getting the boot. After eight seasons, the talk show is getting canceled. Co-host Lonnie Love, hi Lonnie, confirmed the news on Instagram. She says they did everything they could to scale the show down, cut costs during COVID. They shot like seven to eight shows in three days, but the added COVID costs were just probably too much. We don't know. I honestly, I mean, it's our company. I, we don't know any inside dish. They don't tell us anything. The show won three daytime Emmys. This is sad. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're good friends of ours. They always appear on our show. They're lovely individually. The show was great. It broke a lot of barriers. It broke, uh, uh, you know, made history. It was the first kind of panel show since, you know, uh, The View create, not really created that format, but made the panel format, format popular. Mm -hmm. It was the first daytime show to feature a panel of, of women of color discussing right. things that matter right. um, to women of color. And it, it's going to be missed in the daytime sphere. No, I agree. And I think that it, it's, it has to be true, the fact that COVID did hurt so many different industries, but especially daytime talk. I mean, we know we battled. It was hard filming shows but off your iPad. I mean, Our show existed on my iPad literally. for about six months. Quite, yeah. And also, not to get too inside baseball, we are witnessing the end of big, what they call syndicated shows. Mm -hmm. Your Dr. Phil, your Dr. Oz, well, Dr. Oz is running for uh, Senate, but uh, <laughs> uh, Ellen. Your, Ellen, Oprah. Oprah. Stations and big companies like ours, Fox, 
they don't want to pay millions and millions of dollars. They're they're turning back to local shows like ours, right? Which is great for us, you know. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so crew, guess what? We all have jobs for about another week. <laughs> Congratulations. And a gift card. That's right. And a what? And a, what? And a Panera gift card. And a Panera <laughs> gift card. Yeah. Remember when I gave that to Eric? That yep. was great. <laughs> <laughs> the bonuses. Next in the dish, SNL was new over the weekend. Jake Gyllenhaal hosted for the second time. His last time hosting uh, was 15 years ago, probably around the time he did that uh, End of the World movie. This, uh, his monologue featured a song from Dream Girls. This time, he channeled his inner Celine Dion. But when you see me like this, <laughs> and I host you like that, I'll just have to admit that it's all coming back to me. It's all coming back, it's all coming back to you now. There were moments of gold and there were flashes of light. There were sketches I would never do again, but then they'd always seem right. There were nights of endless pleasure. It was more than any shows alive. <laughs> you know the thing I was focusing on? His ears. Oh, please, tell me more. He has interesting ears. Do you know the ears are one of the parts of the human body that never stop growing? Really? Is it is, is the nose and the ears? No, what? Why, Jeff, why are you laughing at that? Uh, no, I, I think I did know that. that. Thank you, is Kendall. Is your ears and your nose? I think ears and nose never stop growing. Oh, Lord, help us all. Yeah, I know, but I mean, soon I'm going to look like a little gay Dumbo. I'm just going <laughs> to fly around. Hello. No, but I noticed that. <laughs> Is I starting already? <laughs> hey, I can educate people. It's not just for laughs. Yes, the more you know. Our show can be educational. Mm -hmm. Shooting star. <laughs> Shooting star. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> I do think about that. The dish isn't done. Coming up next. And they said, or I said, it wouldn't last. TMZ has the details on Benifer's big announcement. Then it's a page turner. What's Kendall reading this month? It's like a fairy tale, but if it's super happy, you know, it's it's a good book. I won't say any more. You'll find out when Kendall and her mom unveil their latest book club picks. And Leo, roll it. It's time to open up the mailbag. Lots of questions and comments this week. That and more when we come back. We were debating savory mousse during the commercial break. Sweet or savory? No, mousse should just be sweet. No. Give me some chocolate mousse. Mm -hmm. and that, that right, Jeff? Just yes. it. Kendall, save. Like chicken liver pate or mousse. Oh, oh my gosh. Gross. Nice garlic toast. Mm -hmm. you, know what's, you know what's worse than chicken liver? What? Foamy chicken liver. <laughs> Welcome back. It seems like there's... <laughs> Seems like there's a holiday for just about everything these days, right, Kendall? We love them. That's right. <laughs> Your sincerity was real good. <laughs> Last night, John, oh, this is so good. John Oliver poked fun at one holiday being celebrated on local news stations across the country. And that is today's Late Night Rewind. And now, this. And now, things get uncomfortable on local news thanks to a terrible holiday. Allegedly, it's National Hug a News Person Day. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, oh, I'm good, I'm fam. good. I'm good. I am also good. <laughs> I don't want anything. Today is National Hug a News Person Day. Or don't. <laughs> I guess. Apparently. Jackie. Is there anyone you really want to give a hug to? Well, first of all, I hate hugs. You know that. I hate hugs. I was like, I'm going to give you, and then I so remember. So much. Yeah. I hate hugs so, so much. Like, even with my family. Am I ever going to hug you? No, Today's no, no, no. Today's National Hug a Newsperson Day. <laughs> Just don't come up 
and hug somebody. Just don't hug don't you? Know. I don't know you. Hug a news person, No, Dave. that's made up. You made that up. I did not make that up. This Where is... did you find it? On some, like, bogus website or? <clears throat> what are you doing? I'm warming up my hugging muscles. Who are you hugging? Maybe Patrick will get a hug today from Krista. We'll see. I don't think he'd want one. Who knows? <laughs> Justin got one last hour. Well, that was an interesting one. Anyway. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Maybe we should just continue. There's some holidays we shouldn't celebrate, you know? Like Hug a News Person Day? We yeah. don't touch people. Yeah, we shouldn't. You, you should ask permission. I mean, I'm a hugger, but I, you know, like Jeff. Jeff doesn't like to be touched by anything or anybody. Kendall, <laughs> you and I are huggy. You know what we I mean? We are huggy people. We're, we're very kind and mm -hmm. loving that way. Yes, we're generous. We like to feel emotions. Yeah. If Jeff could wrap himself in bubble wrap, he would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, on Mondays, we get a special serving a hot dish all the way from Hollywood. Please give it up. And we don't know if he's a hugger or not for Brad from TMZ. Hi, Brad. Good morning, Jason. Uh, no hugs, no small talk. Let's uh, I, I, oh. I'm not a hugger. Oh, and no, no, no. Forget that. You're not a small talk guy either. Uh, I will honestly, if a, if an Uber trip is like under two miles, I'll walk yes. so that I don't have to do the small talk in the Uber. It's pretty I'm, bad. Brad, I'm not good at it. People think because of this job, I would I can talk to four thousand people, but yep. I but the one on one, I never know what to say after this. Hey, how you doing? Good, uh, thanks. Okay, yep. <laughs> and then you know what I mean. That's then it. what do you do? That's it. Yeah, uh, I'm in the same boat. I hear you. Well, let's talk about Chris Rock. Um, he said he will talk, but under a very specific circumstance. Well, that's right. So Chris Rock is still in the middle of that uh, big comedy tour that he had scheduled even before the slap. Uh, and he was in Indio, California over the weekend. And according to a local report uh, who was inside, actually, they had a reporter inside who said Chris Rock said, look, if you guys are here to listen to me talk about the Oscars, you're out of luck. He said, I'll talk when I get paid. Uh, of course, that means could mean a bunch of things. It could mean he's looking for a sit-down interview gig. It could mean he was simply telling a joke. Or on the more serious end of things, maybe he's considering some sort of civil lawsuit. I mean, there are a lot of possibilities here. If I had to guess and kind of the recon that we've gathered through this thing, he was just joking. But uh, the payout on an interview on that would be uh, very significant, obviously. You can't really blame them because yeah. why just why throw away a statement on Twitter when you can talk in one of your own shows where people are going to buy tickets? It's, it's, it's just a smart business move. It's a smart business move. Also, if he goes with the interview route, I mean, his people can kind of help control that narrative as well instead of a Twitter statement that can kind of be strewn in different ways, if you will. So it makes a lot of sense. Yep. Next up, well, I bet it against this. Benifer is, is real, and they're making it really official. They are really engaged. Uh, nearly 20 years after they first got engaged back in 2022. Uh, so it was over the weekend uh, when Jennifer posted on her, uh, on her subscription uh, website uh, that she was engaged. She posted the big green ring. Uh, she said, you're perfect. Looking at the ring, she had tears in her eyes. But the writing on the wall uh, was kind of there on this, right? Because yeah. uh, we knew that the two of them had recently purchased a $55 million home together in Bel Air. Uh, we had seen just how into each other they were. They've been engaged before. They have their families now that they've been combining. I mean, you could see this happening, maybe not this soon, uh, but nonetheless, they're engaged. Other than Vin Diesel, we don't often hear about The Rock feuding with somebody, <laughs> um, but he is feuding with somebody. He is, and uh, so this time it's at the center of his new XFL uh, football league that he is the head of. Uh, they released their logo, and you see a comparison there. The one on the right is for a brand Sue Bird has uh, called Together. And Sue Bird's fiance, Megan Rapino, who of course is the women's team USA soccer star, uh, she went out on Twitter over the weekend and she said, look, these logos are way too similar. We're going to ask the XFL that they change their logo. logo. Otherwise, we'll send a cease and desist and let the courts figure it out from there. Uh, between you and me, Jason, I think that there's enough of a differentiation between yes. these two logos. I mean. Yes, they're the letter X, but it's the letter X. Yeah. Um, and it's also followed by an FL. So I think that there's enough of a difference, but nonetheless, 
It's a uh, another celebrity feud. Yeah, it's not like you see people, you don't see Oprah uh, suing people using the letter O. <laughs> For the letter O, and, and the font's a little bit different and everything. I don't know. I don't think that they'd really have a case here. Well, before we uh, get mired in small talk, I will just say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. <laughs> Bye, Brad. We'll see you next week. For yeah. more of these stories, go to TMZ.com. I hate small talk. I know you do. It's not your specialty. No, I and I'm not. So if you ever meet me, Mm -hmm. it, and I, it does make me sad because people, th I, so many people come up and they're like, we know you don't like this. No, I love meeting people. I'm just really awkward out of this. Like, if I could take this desk with me everywhere, I'd be fine. <laughs> just plunk it in front of the bar. <laughs> I could just... If I could just have this with me and I could just be behind it. Excuse me, Target Run, just I'm yeah. four. But if you take me out of the studio, it's, you know what I mean? I'm just awkward. So I apologize in it. <laughs> okay, thank you, Leo. Yeah, <laughs> can we just, I'll just tell Colin, can we just take this everywhere? You're gonna have to get a bigger van. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I will, I gotta, I got, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I'm gonna admit that I'm wrong. I said that Benifer would be broken up by Arbor Day. And, and it hasn't happened. So I was wrong. I don't think Arbor Day has happened yet either. It's, but it's not, I, they're still not gonna be broken up. So. <laughs> okay. Good. Next in the dish, there are a lot of shows at our fingertips these days, and a new report from Nielsen has the hard numbers. Believe it or not, listen to this. There are eight, uh, there are 817,000 shows to choose from. You heard that right. <laughs> 817,000 shows, and we are proudly one of them. That's right. <laughs> In 2019, there were only 646,000 shows. And then Discovery Plus happened, and then, <laughs> <laughs> then all of the, then the 90 Day Fiance spinoffs, and that ran, ran the number right up. Nielsen says Americans have watched almost 15 million years, years worth of streaming content. <laughs> I've done that in Restaurant Impossible reruns. 65% of people subscribe to two to four streaming platforms. The real question is, do they pay for them all? Yeah, or you're using your Aunt Cindy's. <laughs> right. I have, I think, again, you can't put me in this because it's weird, you know, because I do this for a living. Right. But I, I think I have most of them. I have most of the streaming services. I was going to, do you, you have Paramount, right? Yeah. And Apple TV Plus. Those are always the ones that people might not have. Yeah. Paramount Plus is, and I got to tell you, credit where credit's due, HBO Max. I made fun of it for the, well, the launch was horrible. It let's was. be clear. It got better. It is hot. Mm -hmm. It's hotter than Netflix right now. Do you have Peacock? I do have, yeah. Yeah. That's horrible. I never go to that. You really do have everything. Yeah, I hate, but I get free Peacock. I get steerage Peacock. Like, I, <laughs> I have to watch like 80 commercials. You mean basic people Peacock? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> steerage. Next in the dish, Sam Elliott is walking back the comments he made about the power of the dog. On a podcast, he made comments about the film that a lot of folks saw as homophobic. Yesterday at a deadline event, he cleared the air. Look. The gay community has been incredible to me my entire career. And I mean my entire career from before I got started when I was in this town. Friends on every level, in every job description. Up until today with my agent, my dear friend, my agent of a number of years. And I'm sorry that I hurt any of those friends and someone that I loved and anyone else by the words that I used. I think we said this in a pre-show meeting. Every celebrity should take a lesson of how, of how to apologize. Mm -hmm. That was heartfelt. I take him at his word. I think that was really sincere. Mm -hmm. And people are all right. You know, people never take, uh, they always like to criticize apologies. Right. As a member of the community, I, I don't get, oh, I try not to get overly offended by stuff like that. I don't think he meant any harm. I think I made fun of it when, when we did the story. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't care what Sam Elliott says about gay cowboys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he can be bothered by whatever. Mm -hmm. I still like the dude. I'm still a fan. I didn't want him canceled. And I still, and now I really feel that way. Right. You can't look at that and say that's not heartfelt. Yeah, it was, it was about a three minute apology. And yeah. It was just very like, all I can say is I'm sorry. 
at and this he, point. He also apologized to the whole cast. And also, it's all right for him to not like a movie. You know what I mean? He, it's all right for him to be like, there's a lot of gay cowboys in that. That's fine. <laughs> Sounds fun to me. <laughs> you don't have to like gay cowboys. <laughs> They're a great time, though. I will tell you, though. They're hey. fun. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. <laughs> they are fun. I was just telling Kendall, uh, I wanted to give a little shout out. One of the new foods at Target Field, La Tapatia. Amazing chicken tacos. There was a good line. Uh, uh, they opened in St. Paul years ago. My mm -hmm. friend Alexis loves their burritos. Go get those chicken tacos. Where in the ballpark are they? Main concourse. Okay. By gate six, kind of. Cool. Yeah. Welcome back. It's time to discover a new read. Every month, Kendall and her mom team up to share the latest books that they're loving. So let's see what they're reading this month. Books are back. Mom, I would like to acknowledge something before we start real quick. Yes. Okay. Francine the Fern is sticking out behind me. I apologize if she's a little distracting. Um, she's molting, so I'm, I'm not gonna move her today. Uh, but now that we've gotten that- great. Right? <laughs> now we've gotten that out of the way. Uh, you have a new old book that you and I both love that you're recommending for everyone this month. Correct. This book is called The Book of Lost Things. And it's the, um, her first novel, her name is Ruth Hogan. And I've come to read every book she's published since she published this one in 2017. She's absolutely stunning author. Uh, this book happens to be very filled with hope, uplifting, which is exactly what I feel we all need right now. It is set in London and Brighton, which we all love. And it starts with this woman. Her name is Laura. She's divorced and broken soul. She finds employment with an, as a housekeeper and assistant to Anthony Perdue. Um, who has also experienced great heartbreak and loss of his beloved fiance, Therese, on what was to be their wedding day many, many years ago. The event haunted his entire life. He was very guilty over a broken promise and a lost object, which led him to devote his entire life to collecting lost items and trying to get them back to the people that had lost them. When Anthony dies, he surprisingly leaves his entire estate, his mansion and everything in it, including his collection of lost items to Laura with the condition that she can stay there forever, but she has to make an effort to at least find or restore the lost items to their owners. Um, the novel's got everything in it we love about a novel. It's got interesting characters. It's funny, it's heartbreaking, it's filled with hope. It's beautifully written. And just a fascinating book. Um, and it's also got one of those parallel storylines, which I won't get into now, but they do end up meshing at the end of the book. And I really think you're gonna love it. It's even got a ghost that comes with the mansion. So please read it, The Book of Lost Things. I totally agree. When you first described that book to me, I was like, I don't know, it sounds kind of dull, but it was just such a good, like British TV almost. Yes, like, yes, it's like a fairy tale. But mm -hmm. if it's super happy, you know, it's it's a good book. I won't say any more. Just better read that book. <laughs> yep, it's a good one. Um, mine also is an older book that I actually read a couple of years ago, and I have always remembered it. So you know that it's I I really enjoyed it. It's called The After Party. Now there's two books called The After Party. The one I'm recommending is by Anton uh, Descalfani. Sorry, it's with a D, Discalfani. Anyway, <laughs> it is like a vintage version of Gossip Girl. That's the best way I can describe it. So uh, if you are not a fan of Gossip Girl, you don't know what I'm talking about. It goes back to the 1950s. We are in Houston in the dawn and age of the oil boom. So Houston is where it is at. People have a ton of money and the uppity uppity lifestyle upper society is just popping. And it celebrates these two women, Joan, and Cece. Joan is the debutante. She is the belle of the ball everywhere she goes. Everyone wants to be her. Cece is her sidekick, but also kind of like helps rein her in sometimes because she gets a little out there. One summer, Joan mysteriously kind of leaves. We don't know what happens, but she comes back and she's just very, very different. And mm. so no one really knows if she saw something, experienced something, but it's the 50s. So you don't talk about it. 
um, the book goes on to kind of explore this web and this mystery, which is one section of it. And the other part is these two women who want very different things, but always have to come back to what society expects of them in the 1950s as mm -hmm. an upper society woman, AKA a housewife that has everything going on. Um, it's just rich in historical fiction. I love the friendship side of it. I love their friendship meets frenemy vibe mm -hmm. to it. They're best friends, but um, Cece is very jealous of beautiful Joan and Joan just kind of gets everything handed to her, but she's the one who this horrible, presumably thing has happened to. So I recommend Ooh. it if you're just looking for a quick, good read, um, a little delicious thing to read maybe on vacation or right before you get into your summer books. Wait a minute. This is a pre-summer book? Yeah. Like before you get into your summer books. Well, you know, this is the good summer books, and then you have like your quickie reads. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's just it's seasons, Jason, of reading. I get it. I have seasons of movies that I watch. I See? that's why I was asking. This is a this is a PS, a pre-summer read. <laughs> yes, it's a good way to look at it. Do you read certain books during the summer, like like uh, like Randy romances, like mm -hmm. filled with the. Uh, nookie and naked people? Um, yes, okay. actually. I, I do read a lot of that kind of stuff in the summer. And vacation, exotic murder mystery books. Oh. I just like beach reads. Got it. 10-4. As always, we'll be posting these exotic beach reads uh, <laughs> on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Just search for Jason Show TV. We'll be right back, friends. Back in a moment. <laughs> naked people, Kendall. Naked people. Read only books about naked people. Welcome back. Well, one of the uh, fun things when I encounter folks at Target or at the fair or whatever, people ask about new shows uh, that I'm watching and what I recommend. And this weekend I got the chance to stream a new show on HBO Max that was actually recommended to me within, within a few hours by three people. Hmm. Three people in different parts of my life. And I thought, okay, now then you gotta do something. If three people tell you, you gotta do something. And it's about one of the biggest names ever in food. Look. I've had a recurring thought that I'd like to propose to you. An educational cooking show hosted by myself. Feels flimsy to me. This is public television, for God's sake. Shouldn't we go with someone with a more camera-friendly look and a less distinctive sound? You were onto something so big. I'm just sorry that my colleagues don't have the vision to see it yet. Where are these gentlemen? One of the advantages of looking like me is that you learn at a young age how not to take no for an answer. <laughs> I don't know if I can do all this. Doing this is genius. Action. Julia follows the life of, of course, Julia Child and the creation of her groundbreaking TV cooking show. This is great for a variety of reasons. Uh, I, number one, the acting, David Hyde Pierce, um, and now her name, I just had her name on the tip of my tongue, but uh, the, the great British actress who plays Julia, who, unless, you're, if, unless you are uh, a, a big fan of British television, she's probably new to a lot of folks in American audiences. She re you, you really believe that she's Julia Child. Uh, B.B. Newworth is in the show as well. And what's fascinating is, and I always love, you know, it's really at its root an underdog story. Um, you know, it's, it's a woman who TV executives didn't have really any faith in. Her TV career started, she made an appearance on a, on a very fancy reading, uh, like a book show. And she ended up, and this is what I love, her TV career basically started with a hot plate. She was, on, she was doing this interview and she brought a hot plate that she borrowed from the employee in, at the TV station that really championed her. Because you gotta, so let me finish the, the hot plate. So she brought the hot plate out and instead of doing the stuffy interview, she made a French omelet. Right there. With two chairs and there was an interview segment and it, and it launched her and she became so accessible and, and, and really became likable. And TV executives were like, oh, she doesn't, you know, she's not, and I'm just using, she's not pretty enough. You know, she's very basic looking. But that, what those boneheads didn't realize was all of the things they thought were uh, negatives, net negatives, were all a positive. Mm -hmm. The audience loved her. Mm -hmm. And you fall in love with her 
in this story. And you know what I, I didn't expect? I, I fell in love with the relationship between her and her husband. You know, when you think of Julia Child, you think of just her. You think of Julia pouring ample amounts of wine into a pot roast, you know, <laughs> or, or sticking her hand into a chicken. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't think of her as, and, and this is weird to say, as a sexual being. Right. But seeing her in, a, in her loving marriage and her very supportive marriage, that was an added bonus that I didn't expect in Julia. And I really, for that reason and 17 others, this is my word, delightful. Okay. Delightful. I had heard the only feedback I heard that was people were surprised by was what you just brought up that she was she cursed sometimes and there yes. was like a couple sexual innuendos, but apparently in real life she was like she was she was abroad. She could be abroad. Yeah. Sarah Lankwisher is the uh, is the actress of place. Amazing. It looks so good. Go seriously, TV friends. Go finish our show. Don't, don't stop watching, please. <laughs> we have twenty more minutes. Uh, but then go watch Julia tonight. Let me know what you think. I think I'm going to put it on my list. I think you should. You would really enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. It's on uh, HBO Max. Speaking of streaming services, four episodes are out. We're going to take a break. We're opening up the mailbag and much more when we return right after this. It's so good. And something fell. Oh, the top of my pencil. Welcome back. We're talking about streaming shows. You're loving Bridgerton season two. I do. Yeah back into it. I did. You and my friend Alexis both love it. Mm -hmm. Then my BFF Jen thinks it's uh, horrible. Unwatchable. Um, un Jen. Unwatchable. unwatchable. Yeah. I don't know. She I don't know who I'll, nook nook. I don't know whose side I'll be. No, she doesn't. Anyway, welcome back. <laughs> it's Monday and every Monday we love responding to your questions and comments. It's time to open up the Jason Show mailbag. Hit it, Leo. You I'm not in the show. What? I'm in the show. I know, in the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First up, a viewer from Washington. Hello, Kathy says, welcome to Washington. I'm loving your show. Today you complained about the commercials on Discovery Plus. I would hope you could spend a couple more dollars a month and get a subscription with no commercials. Check it out, it's amazing. Can I tell you? This, favorite comment of the month. Mm -hmm. I'm with Kathy. You just pay up. You have a TV $2. show and a radio show, and you can't spend two dollars. It's like two whole dollars more, and that's it. I don't know why I don't have it. I don't know. Just change it. Oh, it's a lot of work. Make changes in your life. Thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> Next up, many of you uh, comment on my various T-shirts that I get from. Um, you know, here's from the Jason Show before the show show last week featuring a possum with the phrase, let's go eat trash and get hit by a car. Um, now, it's my favorite goofy one. I bought it in honor of photographer Eric because he loves goofy stuff like that. I literally LOL'd when I saw that design. <laughs> so I, it's so absurd and it's my favorite. Anyway, <laughs> Kelly shared this photo to us. I gave this mug to my mom today after seeing your t-shirt. A, a, a possum lives under her shed and she's obsessed with it. <laughs> oh God. That's cute. But again, I always, you know, cause it's independent artists. So I love to give them publicity tpublic.com t e e t e e public and you know why i love it right why customizable oh the tri blend that you, was tri blend i like a soft t-shirt <laughs> don't give me none of that hard crap you know the hard t-shirts that basically like yeah it feels like there's starch in it yeah just put it in the wash machine that doesn't even help next up greg has a question about pizza since you're fussy, <laughs> since Jason's fussy basically about everything, about his coffee order, what is your pizza order? Can I tell you, hmm. the staff, including executive producer Jeff, who knows most things about me, mm -hmm. this has never been covered. We only had one thing that we knew. No green peppers. Yeah, because they're the herpes of vegetables. <laughs> um, they infect everything. Not true. No, it, Kendall. Jason. Our friendship's on the line. You're, are you, <laughs> yeah, oh, Ted agrees too. They're Ted the, doesn't eat anything. He does not count. Well, he's smart because they are, you, and you know why? Hmm. Because no matter, you can, don't tell me to pick them off. Because even if you pick them off, the residue remains. The green pepper taste will always be there. Thus, they're the herpes of, uh, you can't never get away from them. They never go away. Get that visual. So my pizza, <laughs> uh, my pizza order. Yes. I'm going to shock you. Cheese. Just sausage. 
<gasps> just sausage. I'm so disappointed. And if I'm feeling frisky, sausage and onions. No. Which my mom will be very proud of. I used to hate onions, but sausage and onions. Why are, why are you looking at me like I just kicked your dog? Sausage is the actual herpes of pizza. Oh, oh, okay. No more. <laughs> <Did> you, <laughs> Jeff, can we have no more STD references? No, Monday. but really? Okay. No. I think Ooh. you're wrong and you think I'm wrong. That's fine. And together we make a show. Ben has a question <laughs> for us. Hi, Jason and Kendall. My wife and I watch you guys all the time and love the show. But I keep wondering why the table between the two couches isn't level. Because um, we don't have a budget. I mean, let's just be clear. We also stole this from a church. Did we? <laughs> I'm Did we? kidding. I'm no, kidding. No, we didn't steal it from a church. I look at Jeff like Jeff is in the middle of the night going to random churches. Did we actually? No, I don't know where this is. We need to get a new table. Berries. But no, this is, look at it. I mean, it's like. Don't make it too hard. It'll yeah, break. one move and this is crashing. <laughs> but yeah, I know. I mean, let me just tell you, I bought this plant. Wait, wait, wait. Can you turn that around? What? Oh, Eric put little eyeballs in the thing. Eric yeah, you can see. Eyeballs on our plant. Little plant. But no, I bought this. I, you know, come on. You're ignoring the. We're the little show that could, please. Diane is next. Hi, Diane. She says, I saw that producer that sits at the end of the table on the Jason show before the show show in Alexandria on Saturday at Zorba's restaurant. I am so sure it was him. Well, it was him. You're, you're sort of right, Diane. That's actually not a producer. That is television directing legend, director Leo. And we did actually confirm that Leo was in Alexandria that night. He was at a crochet festival or something, so. Or curling. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> what do you think of the yarn? We did confirm, teleprompter roll up. He was in Alexandria uh, that weekend and uh, it was him. It was him, good job. He's, he's very social. Finally, Rachel has a comment about the loon calls that I was playing last week when we were talking about the new baggage claim area and the sound it plays at MSP International. She says, Jason, your loon calls are driving my Dobermans crazy. Yeah. Can she send a video next time? Please do, yeah. <laughs> well, then don't take the Dobermans to the airport because that's an owl, but anyway, stay connected with our show on social media. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And our, our, our address, Jason Show TV. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with the shortest segment and the surprise ending after this. Still an owl. Really quick. I'm, I was rude and I apologize. What's your pizza order? Oh, I just like basically anything other than sausage or pepperoni. <laughs> so everything that I like. <laughs> I like veggies or just margarita. Okay. I'm sorry I didn't ask. That was rude of me. It's time for the world's shortest segment. Hi. TV history last night on The Simpsons. For the first time ever, the show featured deaf and hearing impaired voice actors. Made glorious summer by the son of York. Son of York. Love it. Producers say using sign language in the show was a challenge only because Simpsons characters only have four fingers, but they think they pulled it off. Love to see that. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with the surprise goodbye next. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Welcome back, my friends. Are you ready? I'm ready. Time for the surprise goodbye. We don't know what's in this until right now. Today, we're playing a game, Kendall. Today's game is called the truth test. Kendall and I will have to answer a series of difficult questions. You ready? First, if you hate what your spouse is wearing, do you tell them? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Next question. Colin used to wear this Hamburglar, like this um, striped shirt, yeah. where he looked like either a prisoner or Hamburglar. Oh, on Saturday, Jordan yeah. wore something, and I was like, you're not wearing that, right? <laughs> he doesn't wear it anymore. <laughs> it's the first couple years. <laughs> Next question. If you could make one thing illegal, what would it be? Oh, tooting in public. People just like silently toot and walk away, and it smells really bad. I think that should be illegal. Um, graffiti on, uh, on small businesses, uh, <laughs> stupid graffiti. 
and not art, but graffiti and uh, going slow in the left lane. Our final truth test question. It is kind of illegal, but anyway, where did you go <laughs> on your first date with your spouse? We went to Crave Rooftop. Oh, you? we had sushi. We closed uh, oh. the place down. Well, we had sushi, but we went to Zen Box. <gasps> Look at that. In uh, right by the stadium, one of my favorite places, John and Lena. Such a good place. I love them. Sushi people. That's right. Makes a marriage. It does. And <laughs> not wearing hamburglers. Uh, tomorrow, love you, Kyle. Tomorrow, I'm talking live to Mandalorian star Pedro Pascal. Oh, I'm excited. Cool. I didn't know that. They should read these more often. He stars in a new action comedy and other fun things. Go out there and be yourself. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>